Hi, greetings and welcome scuba, fellow scuba divers. Today uh, is the last one of our mini, uh, our mini experience uh, fleet, fleet, I mean series. Uh, today we are doing Atomic Ghost Fleet. So far we have already done Chainsmokers, Shark Island and First Life. As I said, today is the last one, Atomic Ghost Fleet. So without further ado, Let's get on with it. Start. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. By the way, that alarm that just went off earlier will probably mean that uh, the video that I put up, scheduled up yesterday to come out at 6 o'clock today should be on its way out now. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. Way. And they said don't look directly at the blast. <laughs> that can cover everyone. Don't know what that'll do, but that's what you're supposed to do. Below the Pacific Ocean, near the remote Marshall Islands, lies an eerily preserved fleet of over 50 vessels, destroyed by a series of massive nuclear explosions. But these were no casualties of war. They were sunk deliberately. These wrecks intrigue scientists and divers alike. Now, a team of researchers are on a mission to document the wrecks before they are lost to the sea forever. And for the first time, they will be using the latest in 360 degree filming techniques to record every detail of their extraordinary expedition. Probably the same camera I have. Atomic Ghost Fleet. Between 1946 and 1958, the US military detonated a series of nuclear bombs around the Marshall Islands. Part of a huge experiment to study the devastating power of nuclear weapons the tests were conducted from bunkers like this one. The first took place in July 1946 within the lagoon of Bikini Atoll, close to Bikini Island. Codenamed Operation Crossroads, it involved two bombs. One dropped from a plane, the other detonated underwater. Huge observation towers were erected around the islands and scientific equipment installed to measure the explosion's force and fallout. Banks of cameras were set up to capture almost every angle. Only by unleashing the destructive force of atomic energy against an array of ships could the Navy determine the future ship design of modern naval sea power. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. Great quantities of radioactive water from the column descended upon the decks of the nearby vessels. This wall of lethal spray and fog eventually covered the entire target fleet. Seventeen vessels were destroyed directly. The rest were sunk or scrapped afterwards. Seventy years on, the ghost fleet still attracts scientists and researchers from across the globe. But as the ships deteriorate, time is running out. This is the Alusha, 
one of the world's foremost research and exploration vessels. On board, a team of divers and submersible pilots are preparing to dive. Dive, dive, dive. Their task is to document the wrecks as never before. On their mission, the team will explore three very different wrecks. Lamson, which lies upright, 38 meters under the surface. A destroyer. The Lamson was sunk in the first of Operation Crossroads tests, codenamed Abel. After being launched in 1936, the Lamson patrolled the Pacific waters for 10 years, supporting troops and rescuing civilians caught up in the war. armory remains intact, like these racks that once stored charges, timed underwater bombs. I found the shoot told us that we just bombed. It was the underwater detonation might spring her own hull plates. The boat has to pile on plenty of nuts and leave the ash cans far in her wake before their timing device explodes there. Some of these depth charges survived the nuclear detonation, and you can now see them lying dormant on the deck below. Still pointing upwards, as if poised for attack, are the Lamson's rapid fire guns. Used against surface and air targets, these very guns protected the Lamson and her crew from a fearsome kamikaze attack during the liberation of the Philippines in 1944. In desperate attack, Japanese planes come over our carriers. An enemy plane is shot down. These guns took down two Japanese Dyna planes before being struck by a third, which killed 25 crew. Yes, and smoking, she still fights back. The Lamson was awarded five battle stars for her World War II service before her final mission as part of Operation Crossroads. Abel's bomb was nicknamed Gilda after film star Rita Hayworth's character in the movie of the same name. These towers on Lamson's deck housed equipment that measured the force of Gilda. Up to 23 kilotons, eight kilotons greater than the Hiroshima bomb. Gilda actually detonated 650 meters from her intended target, but sank five ships, including the Lamson, 
he took the full force of the blast to our port side. Join the dive team a short distance away, where lying upside down is the Nagato, the only Japanese battleship to survive World War II. Launched in 1919, the Nagato saw 25 years of service, including the Battle of Leyte, the biggest naval battle in modern history. To the left is what remains of an impressive pagoda mast. It's from this very deck that Admiral Yamamoto radioed the order to attack Pearl Harbor. So legendary was the Nagato's status that her capture became symbolic of Japan's unconditional surrender to the Allies in 1945. The Allied attack put two of the Nagato's four giant propellers out of action, so moving her to Bikini Atoll took twice as long as expected. But in a final show of resilience, she survived the first explosion of Operation Crossroads and remained afloat even after the second, codenamed Baker. Eventually, five days later, she took up her final resting place here. One of the most impressive ships sunk by Operation Crossroads is surely this one, the USS Saratoga. Built in the 1920s, weighing nearly 44,000 tons, the Saratoga saw active duty throughout the Second World War. Her flight deck was over 260 meters long and 32 meters wide, and made from rare India teak wood costing one million dollars, a fortune in the Damn, this guy's voice is sending me to sleep. <laughs> I gotta make it. I Nearby, gotta make it on the sea floor, lie the remains of one of the 96 planes regularly carried by the Saratoga. All 96 could be airborne within half an hour and safely back on board within 50 minutes. Some of these aircraft were tethered to her deck to see how they fared against the nuclear tests. Saratoga also had an impressive arsenal on board, including at least 12 of these 5-inch anti-aircraft guns. So how much longer have we got to listen to this? As one of the biggest and most impressive carriers in the US fleet, the Saratoga became a key target for the Axis forces. The Japanese claimed to have sunk her numerous times, but in reality, the closest they got 
was during the Battle of Iwo Jima. Kamikaze is the Japanese name for it. Fanatical death dives that are now the Army's chief weapon. The Saratoga hit by four Kamikaze planes. Uncle Sam's oldest and biggest carrier, victim of air attack, for the first time in three years of Pacific warfare. 123 servicemen were killed, and the Saratoga suffered extensive damage to her deck and hull. She was awarded seven battle stars in recognition of her service during World War II. She was such a great ship. Of Operation well, why the heck did you put her in a nuclear test site? Well, Saratoga, veteran of many naval campaigns, goes down many hours after the blast. After she sank, parts of the Saratoga's flight deck splintered. For the first time in 70 years, the inside of this magnificent ship can be explored by the specialist oh. Alusia divers. The we are now entering the through the elevator shaft. This is where planes would have been hoisted up to the flight deck above. On the wall to the right is a red alarm light, likely to have been used to alert the crew to danger. Wow. A light on a ship that's red. As we explore further, we enter the officer's mess, a major hub for the crew when out at sea. The officer's mess is such a mess by the looks of it. To the front left is a large bench where meals for the nearly 2,000 strong crew would have been served. <sighs> the hatch behind connects to the galley or kitchens where these meals would have been prepared. speaker and a second alarm light, key for communicating with the ship's vast crew. For now, the Saratoga is impressively well preserved, but the Pacific is beginning to lay claim to all the ships of Operation Crossroads. The Saratoga, the Nagato, In time, the ghost fleet will be lost forever. Until then, it will serve as a lasting reminder of the humbling power of atomic weapons. Frank, <laughs> sorry, I might have gotten a little bit bored with that one. Yeah, I know it's like natural naval history and it's supposed to be all impressive and such. But to be perfectly honest, the guy's voice was starting to send me asleep a little bit there. And I was a little bit bored. I, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy uh, learning about some naval history. I mean, for example, on um, the Little Star, on one of our uh, videos, so one of our um, 360 film channels that we've got, the Little Star, there's a video called HMS Belfast, which does it beautifully. I mean, it's, well, I mean, beautifully, they, they do it great. 
that you've got these two people that are walking around the deck uh, showing you how they look, loaded up the guns and they even did computer graphics analysis of the battles they were in. Uh, I think that, that, was, that was actually quite done quite well and I was interested in that. But, um, I mean, this one, it, sorry, I just could not be gri gripped by that one. And yeah, why, why would they pop their most powerfulest, their best, their flagship um, aircraft carrier? Why would they put their biggest and best aircraft carrier into a nuclear test site? Now, they didn't actually say that. They were just looking for it through um, all these junks. Uh, yeah, junks. Uh, but isn't the point of all these wrecked ships that they were part of that nuclear test? And then they were talking about this um, great aircraft carrier that was the pride and joy, the target of all. If that was the case, why would they pop that in there? Wouldn't they want to preserve it? I mean, show a little bit of respect to the, please, to the ships that served you well. Oh, I know they're probably, um, I don't know. They didn't really explain too much, or I probably just stopped listening. But, um, yeah, I don't think that was worth the actual price that we paid for that, even though that was a couple of quid. But now, I come to think about this. With all these experiences that we've done so far, even though they're like a couple of quid each, you and you probably won't be able to get these on TV anymore, but if you was able to get these um, out there before the day, before the days of the internet, you would have to buy these in uh, video shops. And yeah, you would probably get these for about a couple of quid. So even though they are just free um, VR experiences, considering it back as buying a VHS tape from, a, from your local uh, news agents or uh, WH Smiths, that's having this in their documentary section because I don't think they do that anymore but um, yeah if you was to buy these on VHS they would be just about the same price that you've got up there now so yeah that has been Atomic Ghost Fleet first live I did yesterday well a few moments ago but I uploaded it yesterday Shark Island and Chainsmokers up and coming we still well that not any more up and coming because that's the uh, experiences all done and dusted uh, but i still got a few more episodes to do on time machine i still yet to do sports bar now by the time this launches i might have already done far point because hopefully i will be getting that on wednesday which by the time this launches this video goes out it should have been like yesterday or the day before or maybe last week, I don't know. I'm not sure how I'm going to upload these yet. But, um, yeah. Another thing that I want to do, not VR related, is I want to go and deconstruct the Prey demo, um, the tech, sorry, the, uh, the test labs. I'm going to deconstruct the t test labs on the Prey demo. Uh, so I am going to do that tomorrow because I've already got something else coming uploading tonight. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I, when you see this video, it'll be a couple of days ago, maybe last week. <laughs> Time. It's all wibbly wobbly when you're doing pre-recorded stuff to upload in the schedule. But yeah. Cool. Let's see. At this. What have we got? At the day of this. Let's see. Star Trek Bridge Crew. Got 14 days and five hours until Star Trek Bridge Crew comes out. So, looking forward to seeing that and all the other stuff we've got. Cool. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching this lot as much as much as I've enjoyed playing this lot. Maybe even more so. Uh, so, please don't forget like and subscribe. Help a brother out or guy out. Help me out. Um, also, don't forget to check out my book at www.jewelmage and um, have fun and I'll see you guys out there.